What was weird about Antarctica? There's nothing there. So if you want to go see the emperor penguins or uh, all of the wildlife that is available, you can't go to the interior of Antarctica, which is where we were. We were at a... Uh... Wow. <laughs> Jeez. So I thought that this was going to be the coolest jump that I'd ever done. And what I will say it is it's the probably the coolest location, just what what went into being involved in that. Because we were there for a week. We did our first jump uh, the day after we got there. And then we did the final jump the day that we left. But it's a camp. Uh, the company is called Ailey, Antarctic Logistics and uh, Exploration. Um, it's uh, One of the partners is Mike McDowell. And awesome Australian family. His son is out there. Tim's out there working with him. And it's a full-on camp. Like Alex Honnold had passed through shortly um, after we had left there. He was climbing Mount Vincent, which is the largest mountain in Antarctica. Crazy group really? of people. So fully set up. Like library. Indoor packing area for us to do our parachutes, bathrooms, showers, really nice tents. Will Smith was there earlier. That like people were really? passing. Yeah, if you're going to film, from my understanding, if you're going to do like a, a high end film project, you basically work your way through that. It's fully established. There's a blue ice runway. We flew in on a 757. What's a blue ice runway? A runway made of like blue ice. The runway you land on is straight fucking ice. There is lights Whoa. on. The, it's crazy, and it's a chartered. It's a chartered uh, 757 through Icelandic air. Yeah. It, Holy shit. You just land on ice? Straight up blue ice. It, it, it wasn't that uh, like a deep, dark blue. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the rush. So if you look in what front of that aircraft, fuck? that's what it is. What the fuck? So those are that's the Russian plane, um, which they that actually landed while we were there. I got a killer GoPro shot. That's the camp. Third row down. The little. Uh, yep. That's it right there. And that's basically what it looked like when we were there too. They had now is that camp set up for scientists? Like, no. no. So there at the South Pole, there is a bunch of, from my understanding, like pure science going on there, fun, uh, funded by governments. This is straight up, kind of, tourism. I mean, you can go there and just hang out in camp. You can go see uh, glaciers. Yeah, I mean, this is this is at one of the other. They have remote camps Whoa, as well. They have like a, a crazy. Um, like very high end camp, like not, and yeah, like the, there's tents like that. Those are the tents we were staying in right there. That one you're that's hovering over there. Those are the kind of tents that we were staying in. Whoa! But it's on an ice field. There's no there's no insects. There's no wildlife. The sun doesn't go down. And how much food do they have up there? As much as you could possibly want. They had a full like dining facility. It like it's it, the setup there is unbelievable. You can go in and get food anytime you want to. They're doing like uh, they'll have a presentation every night. High end, like National Geographic photographer, um, all sorts of crazy motherfuckers pass through there. Like, I'm just going to walk to the South Pole and they'll come back in subsequent years and give talks on, you know, where they went and how they avoided these crevasses, which I had no fear of until I went to Antarctica and got the brief on crevasses, which is just, you're dead. They'll never find you again. <gasps> and the camp is, of course, surrounded by them. <laughs> so how we, deep are they? Uh, hundreds of feet deep. It, depending on the, the ones that you get into, it's just from the shifting and moving ice. And, and you, sometimes people just fall into them? I, I don't think... Oh, yeah, this is a guy who fell into one skiing. This is Oops. making its rounds on the old internet. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. I mean, so you can't even see the... He stops himself. This guy self-arrests. Oh, fuck. But can you... I mean, like, who knows how much farther down that... How did he get back out? Uh, he might have self-rescued. Or he could have been... Self-rescued is a terrible fucking phrase. Yeah, but it's, it's also actually pretty important to... To, to be know able how to, to do. Yeah. at all times, whatever it is that you are actually doing in your life. Do those guys ski like that with an ice pick? I don't think they ski with an ice pick, but I think, and, and I don't do this type of skiing, but you know, the bottoms of their poles are sharp as well. So depending on what they need to climb out of, they might have crampons in their backpack. I'm assuming that the person had like a full backcountry kit oh with my them. God. Now, what do you do? Do you leave the skis behind? Do you drop them and try to save your ass? Or do you try to come up with the skis? Because if you don't have the skis, you're kind of fucked. Well, if they're smart, they're going to have a GPS communicator of some kind. Yeah. Like in the modern era, if you go out into the backcountry of any kind and don't have the ability to communicate, you're a fucking idiot. Like the barriers yeah. to entry is a couple hundred bucks and you can, yeah. get, you can talk to people. Maybe only text, but you could hit a button and legitimately yeah. people will come get you. I would say it depends on the situation that you're in. I think priority should be self-rescue. If you can, yep. Uh, yeah, he was able to get out using ice cleats and a piece of rope yep. from his friends. So he was smartly <gasps> not out there by himself, so they probably saw him go in. Jesus. He yeah. could have been done. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, or if he hadn't self-arrested and had gone down hundreds of more Broken feet. Broken his legs. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
broken his neck, died like that. See? Instead, he lives hard, another day. Hard Just, pass. I'm reasonable, he Joe. Gets right back on the skis. <laughs> <laughs> so there's yeah. none of that going on in Antarctica, but we got this brief on. Hey, we're getting ready to jump, and just so you know, like, here's the landing area, and everywhere else is crevasses. I'm like, oh, mm. okay, so we should probably land in the landing area. But it was, it was crazy. <sighs> they had aircraft. They had, f- and how do they know that a new crevasse isn't going to open up on the the ice runway? Uh, on the blue ice runway, they land the aircraft. I'm yeah. assuming they do uh, surveys. Oh, look, is they flattened it out? Yep. Yeah, oh. yeah. like and that's every legitimately it. This every yeah. time it says, yeah. yeah. Every 22 hours? Yeah. Oh, it involves 22 hours yeah. of grooming. Mm-hmm. Oh, so every they're just constantly lands. doing it. Yeah. And they shut the camp down every year. So I just had lunch, or I'm sorry, a dinner with uh, Mike and his son Tim in, in Salt Lake a few weeks ago. And then they're getting ready to head back out there, I think, in January. And they'll stay out for the season. That's probably the aircraft that we jumped out of Twin So Otter. why do they s- shut it down every year? Uh, the winter is just super gnarly, and it's the dark season. So instead of the sun never really coming, or never really going down, the sun never really goes up. So oh. it's shitty to have people out there. Bro. So that's White Desert. That's a different place, but that's uh, I believe that's um, on the other side of Antarctica, but similar concept. The people that are there all the time, they must be weird. I think it's a special kind of person that wants to make oh, that their yeah. occupation. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> but the jump there was wild. I mean, I, bet. I was it looks wearing, incredible. I had a duffel bag. I'm not joking you, the size of this fucking table. Because I had never jumped in Antarctica, so I'm Googling, like, what's your normal temperature? I had done that wingsuit jump up mm-hmm. in uh, Davis, where it was very cold at exit, but 100 degrees on the ground, because it was Northern California in the summertime. So I took this duffel bag, <laughs> and I, I on our first jump, I put on just about everything in that bag, and I think I might have been the closest to a heat casualty that I've ever been in my fucking life. Really? Because we were in a Twin Otter, which is a normal skydiving plane, and they had the door open. Uh, the whole time they actually took the door off but we were kind of up forward there wasn't a lot of wind coming in i'm talking like electronic gloves several layers profusely sweating underneath oh no all the shit that i'm wearing oh, that's horrible it was horrible because for those of you out there who don't know what happens to liquid when you jump out into a freezing environment so you're sweating your ass off jumping out into it's probably in the negative 30s or 40s Free fall, parachute, open up, and you're just like ripping off clothing in Antarctica. It was hilarious. We all overdressed for the first one, and I think most people were wearing one or two layers for the second jump that we did. So when you got to the bottom, how cold is it? Uh, 10 degrees. Oh, okay. But sunny. Like, I was wearing a pair of essentially snowboarding pants and a long sleeve t-shirt, not because I needed the... Oh, yeah. This is actually a video that I made of the camp... So for underlayers, are you using synthetics? Are you using merino? Like what? Because it, it's very dangerous when you sweat like 